Hi, this is State Representative Jeffrey Elmore, and I represent District 94 in the North Carolina House, which is comprised of 95% of Wilkes County and all of Allegheny County. Uh, today, what I'm going to be talking with you about are some of the highlights from the long session, which concluded on September 30th. It was one of the longest sessions since 2002, but many things were done, and I want to hit some of those highlights for you. I'm going to talk about what we faced going into the long session, which started in January, some of the things that we did during the long session, and some things that we will be approaching in what is called the short session, which will be starting in 2016 on April 25th. In state government, the budget that is passed is a biennium budget, so it covers two years, and the short session will deal with budget adjustments. First, coming into the legislative session, uh, we were excited to hear that the unemployment debt owed to the federal government was paid off. The, gov uh, the Governor McCrory made this announcement uh, in spring of this year. In 2009, the state of North Carolina borrowed almost $2.9 billion to pay unemployment benefits because of the downturned economy. Uh, this debt owed was paid for through FUDA taxes, which were on all of our business owners. Through reforms made to the unemployment system and a higher rate on the food attacks, uh, this debt is now officially paid off. Uh, another reform that we did this year to adjust this milestone that we met was Senate Bill 15. Uh, Senate Bill 15 ensures that we will have one billion dollars in our unemployment fund and once that is met the business owners will see a 20 percent reduction in the food attacks. All of this should equate for more capital for our small businesses, which should open up employment to help with our unemployment needs. Also, what we call the April surprise in Raleigh, uh, April 15th, we found that uh, our revenues were up 15 to 20 percent because of tax reform changes made last session and also uh, unemployment, or excuse me, employment gains. Uh, the surplus was at $445 million which was very exciting since we have not seen surpluses since around 2006. We also came into the session seeing that unemployment has dropped to 5.4 percent statewide. Now that is an average for the entire state, but you still see higher unemployment in certain areas of the state, especially our rural areas. The biggest part of the session is dealing with the budget. And the budget was passed, and it's a $21.735 billion agreement. Uh, you see a 3.1% spending increase, which is increasing dollars in our public education, also shoring up our rainy day fund and our repair and renovations fund by almost $600 million. Both of these funds had become low due to the downturn in the economy and using those to balance our budgets for the past few years. You will see an allocation of uh, $313 million in the first year loan for compensation for all state employees. This is including a $750 bonus that all state employees, teachers, and others will be receiving this December. It increases funding for public education by more than $530 million in the first year loan. You also will see a cut in the personal income tax rate to, a, again, a flat rate of 5.49% beginning in the year 2000. 17. You also see an increase in the zero bracket. Uh, on the first $15,000 of income, you will not be paying a state tax. We've increased that to $15,500. Uh, this should be very beneficial to our working poor in the state. It also provides $225 million over the next two years to begin the process of restructuring our Medicaid program. This has been one of the biggest budget drivers that we have faced for about the past decade um, in trying to control the budget numbers with seeing the numbers of Medicaid increase. We also restored the unlimited charitable deduction on the income tax and also the medical deduction. I heard several complaints from folks in the district dealing especially with the medical deduction because it affected our uh, elderly and sick. Uh, we restored that to take that burden off of them. Also, you will see a new local tax revenue stream to support education and economic development 
in counties that have insufficient local sales tax dollars. This restructuring of our sales tax distribution uh, came about through months of discussion and this should benefit our rural counties greatly. It will bring hundreds of thousands of dollars into District 94 for Allegheny and Wilkes County and all of the municipalities in the district. We also saw a problem with our salaries for our law enforcement, especially our state troopers. So a step that we made was that we increased the starting salaries for our highway patrol from 35 to 36 annually. We also increased the salaries of our prison guard workers because we were finding that we were having turnover in those positions and also it was very difficult to recruit in those positions. Now the biggest part of the budget that we deal with is dealing with education. Education K through university level comprises 56% of the total $22 billion budget. What you will see in the budget is an increase for public education by more than $530 million in the first year alone. We have unfroze the steps for the teachers. Uh, last session we changed the structure of their pay scale and we are no longer is it frozen. It had been frozen for several years prior to the sessions, um, the last two sessions. Also, you will see uh, that unfrozen steps that in step one, which is year zero to four, that we changed the starting salary from 33,500 to 35,000 to help bring younger teachers into the profession. We also, you will also see in the budget a reduction in class size to a ratio of one to 16 in the second year in first grade. Research has shown that smaller class sizes, especially with the younger levels, will help with their academic performance and their reading skills. We also increased the budget allotment for textbook and digital learning resources. This was a fund that had been lowered over the past several years to protect the employment of our state workers and teachers. Uh, this increase will help the students get the tools that they need to be successful in school. It also expands the Read to Achieve summer reading camps. Uh, this past year, our third graders that were struggling in reading had the opportunity to attend a summer camp to help with their reading skills. This budget will allow not only third graders to attend, but also first and second graders to prepare them for that critical year of third grade when research has shown that a child needs to have the reading skills to be able to be successful in the upper grades of their education. And after talking with several of the workers in the camps in both Allegheny and Wilkes, the camps were quite successful in helping the children meet their educational goals. You'll also see in a, the budget a increase in support for the Opportunity Scholarship Program by $14 million over the two years. Uh, these are need-based scholarships for students from working families. Um, you will also see additional monies for special needs scholarships. Uh, which is for children who have uh, special needs or exceptionalities. Also, a thing that we worked really hard on is that we preserve the driver's education program. This was something that was debated, um, quite heated debate, over several months of the session. Uh, the budget provides the full $26 million needed to keep the program operational and also it is going to look for reforms in the program to make it as efficient as possible to meet the needs of our young drivers. Uh, it also pres preserves the low fee of $65 for the student. And we see actual cost of this program floating around an average of $300 per student. So it is quite a savings for the student at a $65 fee. It fully funds the teacher assistance. This was an issue and a heated debate in the legislative session, the role of our teacher's assistants in the classroom. These teaching assistants are vital for the performance of our students, especially in the lower grades, and with our goal of trying to get every child to read by third grade. This budget funds them at their levels from prior years to preserve those positions and also to help our students. Also, you will see additional funding for what is called the School Connectivity Initiative. We are fortunate in District 94 to have high speed internet and fiber optic cable throughout the district, but many parts of our state do not have that. The only thing that we can guarantee at this point is 
internet access to the principal's office in every school. So many of our classrooms still do not have internet connectivity. The increase in this funding will help our students face the 21st century with their technology needs. Major thing that we tackle every session is what is called regulatory reform. And this year, the regulatory reform was House Bill 760. The goal of this is to try to look at regulatory barriers that prevent the public and private sectors from operating as efficiently as possible. We, this year we looked into the role of nonprofits because we found that many of the regulations, especially dealing with insurance, really hurt, especially our small nonprofits, which do quite a service for many of the social needs that we have across the state. Uh, this provision will allow charitable organizations to serve our state to their full capacity. We also uh, commissioned a study to identify how the General Assembly can continue to reduce the regulatory burden on nonprofits, to look at the issues that are specific to that sector of our economy. Some things that we did work on, and is always a concern of mine as serving on the Public Utilities Committee, is the rising, rising energy rates. And what regulations have we have in place that are causing our energy prices to increase, which is very harmful, especially for our elderly citizens. We also are looking into state occupational licensing boards and making sure that the requirements for license for certain professions are needed and necessary, not just a tool to keep certain people out of the uh, whatever sector the occupational licensing is dealing with. Another major initiative that was dealt with in the long session was the Connect NC Bond Act. Uh, this bond will be on the ballot March 15th in the primary this upcoming year. Some things that the bond will do, and it passed with a bipartisan vote of 93 to 20 in the House, it is $2 billion that will be borrowed to support critical projects across the state. But ultimately, the decision to borrow this money will be up to you, the voter, on March 15th. Projects in our district include monies for Stone Mountain State Park, the Wilkes Community College, a proposed National Guard regional hub that would be placed in North Wilkesboro, and water project matching funds, which should help with our water intake project uh, that is being worked on with uh, Wilkes and the two municipalities. One of the biggest things that we did this session was a piece of legislation that dealt with Medicaid reform. Uh, Medicaid has been increasing dramatically over the past decade. It's comprising now almost 26% of the budget. Uh, Medicaid is our program which provides health insurance for children and disabled in our state. This reform effort will see a change from a pay for fee service to what is called a capitated pay system. And this will be led with what are called um, LMEs and MCOs. These are a combination of hospital groups and also insurance type companies that will look at the needs of the specific patient that is on Medicaid to try to steer them in the right direction for their primary health care physician. One of the biggest cost overruns that we see with the Medicaid program is that many of, them are, uh, many of the recipients of Medicaid get their primary care health needs through the emergency room. That is one of the most costly ways of obtaining your health care. These reforms will help these folks find a primary care physician to be able to lead them in the right direction with their health care needs. This should save the state money and it also should provide better health care for the recipients of Medicaid. This reform effort is so large that it cannot happen immediately. Uh, we are going to be sending our proposal to the federal government to, for their approval because the federal government contributes a great deal of the Medicaid dollars. I want to talk a little bit about some of the bills that I sponsored that were passed uh, this past long session and are now law. Uh, one is the repeal of what are called PEPs, or personal education plans. I heard numerous complaints from teachers in the systems about the excessive paperwork that they have. And they found that the PEP was a piece of paperwork that was just not an effective tool for them anymore. It was just an additional piece of paper that they had to fill out. Uh, I'm happy to say that now through session law, teachers will no longer have be required to fill out a PEP on a student. 
Uh, also from complaints from my hunters uh, and others in the district, uh, you will see regulations coming through the Wildlife Commission to allow for the sale of deer skins. Um, this will help with some of the carcass waste that you see on the side of the roads because it will allow the hunters now to sell the skins to various fur dealers. They can't gain a lot of money from it, but hopefully it will help with the waste that many of us see on the side of the roads and in our ditches and uh, off embankments and such. Uh, also a local bill that was passed uh, that Senator Randleman and myself worked on was uh, to allow for fox trapping in Wilkes. Uh, the Wildlife Commission was happy to see this bill filed due to the coyote problem that we're having. And I've heard numerous complaints from our cattle farmers on the coyote problem. So hopefully this will help some with that uh, invasive population that we're seeing. And something else that was a spinoff in the budget on a big comprehensive bill that I sponsor, but I'm excited to see, is that there's going to be a position at Appalachian State to deal with teacher recruitment. Uh, this is an issue that I have been working on for about the past year and a half of trying to find out better ways to get younger people to go into the education profession. This uh, provision in the budget will hire a position to specifically recruit community college students and existing students on campus that are not in the education department to try to develop interest in them going into the education department to become teachers. Because the long and short session how it works, uh, bills can be dead, but they can still be alive if they've passed one chamber, but have not passed the other. And a couple of my bills that are still alive that I'm going to be working on in the short session is one that deals with duty-free time for teachers for lunch. Uh, I found that um, not as much in our district, but statewide, that many of our teachers do not even get an opportunity to sit down and eat or take a restroom break. Uh, this change in the law will allow for planning from the school systems and the principals to allow at least 15 minutes for the teacher to have a restroom and lunch break. Also an interesting thing that uh, I will continue to look at uh, is a bill that studied the idea of what is called fixed tuition. This concept is that when a student comes in their freshman year to the public university that the price of their tuition would be fixed for the time that they spend at the university. So it would be the same cost for the four year time period. Uh, the benefit of this idea is that it would have cost controls for our university system. Also, it would give the student a guaranteed outlook of the price that they would be paying for their education. Uh, I hope to continue working on that in the short session. Now, some things that we're going to be looking at in the short session that are continued problems that we have in North Carolina is what's called the rural divide between urban and our rural areas. Uh, here in Northwest North Carolina, we are a very rural area. And as we have seen for the past couple of years, exponential economic growth in areas such as Wake and Mecklenburg counties, our rural areas just do not seem to have the same level of economic growth. Uh, that is something that we will continue to work on in the short session. Also an initiative of our Agriculture Commissioner, Steve Troxler and the Governor is trying to work through economic development to get meat processing and ag processing plants into the state. Uh, we have a very strong agricultural economic base here in North Carolina. It's actually our main economic driver, but something that we are lacking are processing plants to process the food. Uh, we are seeing many of our crops shipped to neighboring states to be processed into canned goods or frozen, etc. So uh, we will continue working on trying to recruit these processing plants into our area which as we know in the 94th district here, um, meat processing is very critical to our economy. And we will continue to look at economic growth for the state as a whole. A big part of my job as a representative is helping you with constituent services. If you ever have a question, a concern, maybe about a program that you're involved in, your street, um, your child's education, always feel free to contact the office with your question. We may not have the answer for you, but we have the uh, resources available to get your question answered. And that is a major part of my job as serving you in the North Carolina House. I appreciate your time today and listening to the uh, updates of the long session and um, look forward to the short session that will be coming up at the end of April on April 25th. Thank you.